group. Let's see, shall I review the Lawrence group? Or because I did it early in the course, should I just skip that? I would like. Huh? Like whenever you derive like how states transform under Lorentz transformations, or just things about the Lorentz group in general. No, general just the, the idea that and, okay. eta, that's eta with zeros elsewhere. That x dot y, um, which is. Um, But this is invariant under Lorentz transformation, and so L in matrix notation, Lx transpose eta Ly is equal to um, plus x transpose L transpose eta Ly. We want this to be um, x transpose eta Y. And so the rule for Lorentz transformations is L transpose eta, L equals eta. Okay. Just to review, there are some more things. I've, I've upgraded up. I've um, added to the class notes. I added a homework problem. Oh, well, let me get to it when I get to it. Uh, if we say that L, as usual, is the identity plus something minuscule, by the way, in case I forget, um, on YouTube, you can get a free audio book of Bob Woodward's new book called Fear. Um, at least you can get the first half or something of the book. I don't really know. I, um, anyway, it's well done. So um, L is I plus omega. So this equation here is I plus omega transpose. <coughs> I plus omega is, well, of course, that's equal to eta plus omega transpose eta plus eta omega. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that because we want to keep terms only to first order in omega. And this has to equal omega. And so we have the rule that omega transpose eta plus eta omega. Zero. So that's what defines the infinitesimal parameters, omega. And um, remember, what I did was I said, well, let omega be uh, theta dot r plus lambda dot b, where these guys are four by four matrices. Okay. Now. Matrix algebra is really, really useful because we can write things down in very simple ways. There are no subscripts and so forth. Um, and this is a little in a sense, matrices have over components somewhat the, they offer a, a simplicity and advantage somewhat similar to the advantage that differential forms offer um, over uh, components. But on the other hand, it's sometimes useful in an actual calculation to have components. And in any case, Weinberg um, does uh, most things in chapter 5 on in terms of components. So let me restate this relation in terms of components. And there are many ways of doing that. But um, to keep Weinberg, to use Weinberg's notation, it looks like this. 
Um, so this means column index, and the first index is row index. Okay, so that's the that's what this notation means. Whether a thing is upper or lower has to do with um, using the Ada matrix to raise and lower things. So for example, A A is A to A B, A, um, sorry, A to A B, A B, and this thing here is actually Ada. So Ada, lowercase a b is minus one 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 one, and if you use eta to raise eta, you then get eta a b is just the identity, and eta upper a b is the same thing as eta lower a b. Um, so what do what do uh, these equations uh, look like? Well, in component notation, they become rather long-winded. It's uh, omega a b is omega transpose b a. So transposition means that you interchange rows and columns, but you don't change whether a thing is an upper or a lower index. And so this is we want this to be minus eta omega eta B A. Um, which is, let's see, I, I skipped um, a, a, a step here. Um, the idea, let's see, the idea was that we have that relation and in matrix notation that gives us omega transpose times is minus eta omega eta. So that's that's the step I skipped. And so that's minus eta omega eta B A. And now what is this? This is minus a to b c omega c d a to d a and this is minus omega b d that's because a to lowers the index c i'm using of course the summation convention a b c goes from go from zero to three so in this section, I've um, adopted my Fortran-like notation where letters I, J, K, L, and so forth are spatial and other Latin indices go from 0 to 3. So this is omega B, D, A to D, A, and this is minus omega B, A. So that's, um, that's that rule, and now if you lower the uh, index A, for example, writing omega EB equal to A to EB omega AB, then that is minus omega uh, BD here, A to DA, a to E B, no A to E, A to E A. Where, no, what is A to E B? Actually, I think I've got a typo here. All right, let's look at this again. So we're just lowering the index A on this. So we do E B. That should be EA. That is EA. EA, and that's minus omega BD, A to DA, 
eta e a. So I just I just have to read my notes. The trouble is when you're everything's a subscript, it's a little hard to keep everything straight. So this is minus omega v d. This sum a to d a a to e a a to of course is symmetric, so you can rewrite that as a to d a a to a e, and that is just delta d a or equivalently a to d e. Sorry, and that means that's minus omega b e. So the final thing is that omega is anti omega with lower indices is anti-symmetric. So this is. This is what um, what in matrix notation looks like that. So how does this not apply to the boosts? What? How does this not apply to the boosts? Because aren't the generators of boosts symmetric? Is it because both indices are higher? No, I don't know. Eta, eta, eta is just the flat and the metric of flat space time. Oh sure, but but these these omegas. Well, these, omegas are, these omegas are, per, are, are the parameters that make up an, a, a small Lorentz transformation. And um, in particular, omega would then be theta, could, could be thought of, as, that is to say, the matrix omega is a generator of a small Lorentz transformation. Sure. But the, so my, my question though is the, the Bs. The B generators, your boost, your generators of boosts, those are symmetric, right? The generators of boosts are symmetric, yes. They're okay. real and symmetric. So then why does this not, this set, this, this to me... Oh, 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 oh uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. In, this, in, in, in this notation, um, the Bs are symmetric matrices that are real, and the R's are anti-symmetric real matrices. Um, but that is where a matrix looks like this. When you lower an index, then things... Are you multiplied by that? Right, right, right. So... So if, if you um, multiply, say, eta times B1, uh, this would be minus 1, minus <coughs> 1, I'm assuming this is going to work out, 0, 1, 1, 1, and then everything 0. Mm -hmm. So this would give us uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. The next one would give us minus 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, and everything else 0. And so now, um, with lower indices, it's anti-symmetric. And for that matter, the rotation matrices, to follow Austin's point, the rotation matrices only have entries, although they're 4 by 4, they're, all their entries are spatial. And so if you raise or lower indices with eta, it has no effect. And they are anti-symmetric in, uh, in this form as well as in that form. All right, anyway, back to component notation then. Um, what Weinberg likes to write is a He's now using these omegas simply as, um, instead of, I was using them over here as 4x4 four four matrices. Now he's thinking of these 4x4 four four matrices simply as parameters and they multiply um, generators in a representation of the um, Lorentz group. So this is a particular representation of the Lorentz group in terms of matrices that are, have whatever the dimension of J is. And 
then uh, pops out this um, nightmare relation for generators of uh, Lorentz matrices. This is the Lie algebra of the Lorentz group. And it's A to B, C. A to AC Okay, so that's one way of writing the Lie algebra of the Lorentz group. We'll see there's a much simpler way of writing it. Uh, in a moment. In fact, I don't know why anybody ever uses this expression, actually. Now, here's, here's something remarkable um, due, I guess, originally to somebody named Clifford. Um, and his idea was to introduce gamma matrices. Well, I don't know if he called them gamma matrices, but let us just say matrices where this is gamma A, gamma B, plus gamma B, gamma A, and this is then 2 A to AB. So, in general, these are N by N matrices. In four and five dimensions, in space times, of four and five dimensions. Um, these are four by four matrices. In space times of two and three dimensions, they're three by three matrices. And in fact, the three by three matrices are the Pauli matrices. Yes? I can ask about the top expression. Couple. Yes. Is the definition of commutator? Is this the definition? Uh, it's how get this, this, this <clears throat> um, He's basic. He's basically saying um, he, he's imagining that we're all terribly familiar with the Lorentz group and we remember this. This is just what the Lie algebra looks like of the Lorentz group. But in a moment, I'll write it in a much simpler form, and we'll see that, um, in fact, the, the, in, other words, um, in other words, when I think of the Lorentz group, I don't think of that crazy formula. I think of um, the R's and the B's. And, um, not simply the R's and the B's, but there's something even simpler. R plus or minus IB. These form two J's. These form two Lie algebras that are like angular momentum and are independent. But, but omega is a Lie algebra, right? But what? Omega is a Lie algebra. Omega, in this equation, they're just parameters. It's like when when I would say when I write an arbitrary element of a Lie algebra or, or a Lie group close to the identity is 1 plus i generator times parameter. Here the, here the omegas are parameters and the j's are matrices. But the before Omega is the, so the, uh, the omega here and the omega before are not the same. Yeah, it's funny. There's a sort of a sort of dual nature to this thing. Here, everything's simple. L is a matrix, four by four. Omega is a four by four matrix. Everything's crystal clear. These are the generators, and you can go on. 
Here, these guys are just parameters, and these are the matrices. It's, in a sense, it's making things more difficult than necessary, really. But since he did it, and you'll see it universally quoted, I thought I'd mention it. And there is something special here. You see, this is something that I didn't do when I was talking about Lawrence, but I didn't bring in the clip analogy. And this is something that is um, magical. So in general, in any space-time, you can find matrices gamma that anti-commute, anti-commute to the flat space metric, and um, in four and five dimensions, they're four by four, and the smaller, they're, they're the, the poly matrices. And let me, let me say what the J's are in, in these terms. JAB is minus I over four, times the commutator of gamma A with gamma B. So that's a very, a very nice expression. And again, that's kind of the magic of the, of the Clifford algebra. By the way, this eta in n dimensions, it's just a diagonal matrix with plus minus one on the diagonal. So it could be Euclidean space with, where eta would just be the identity matrix. Now, um, if we are talking about a space-time of four or five dimensions, then these gamma matrices, in fact, in four, four space-time dimensions, the gamma matrices are the Dirac matrices. And, um, but you can see right away that the gamma matrices, all they have to do is satisfy this relation. In fact, let me write this relation more carefully. It would be gamma A, and now, now I hesitate to Okay, I'm gonna, I'm not sure where to put the subscripts here. So let me just write them as alpha beta, gamma B, beta gamma, plus gamma B, alpha beta, gamma A, beta gamma, equals, and what is this? This is 2 eta AB delta uh, alpha gamma. So that's in, in components, in other words, this is, this is in a matrix, a sort of hybrid notation of AB components and then matrices. And the idea is that these four by four matrices are such that when you multiply them one way and then multiply them backwards, you get two A to AB times uh, delta alpha gamma. All right. In other words, another another way of thinking about it is gamma A gamma B is blah 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 the identity the identity in the indices of the gamma matrices. So that's probably a clearer way of writing it. So what is the IP? What is this, this, this expression? What is what? Is this component in the yeah. What is this? Okay. Well, all right, let's, let's do an example. Let's do an example. You, I owe you about three, two or three of these. Um, so let's do an example. Gamma 1, gamma 2, plus gamma 2, gamma 1 equals 0, because A to AB is 0. Uh, gamma 0 squared 2, that's what you get when you do this, is then 2, A to, whoops, A to 0, 0. Well, this is then minus 2. So this is gamma 0 squared is equal to minus 
The identity. I left out an identity here. Uh, what about gamma 1? Gamma 1 squared, or 2 gamma 1 squared, is 2 eta 1 1 times the identity. Well, that's just two the I, twice the identity, so gamma 1 squared has to be the identity. So in a sense, these things are really pretty, are even simpler than the, than the gamma notation. It's, it's that gamma 0 squared is minus 1, gamma i squared is 1, or the identity. And, but then there's all this anti-commutation, namely that, that, um, that if, if, if A is not equal to B, in other words, gamma A gamma B plus gamma B gamma A is zero if A is not equal to B. All right, so this is, now, when students are first taught the gamma matrices, they sometimes cling to them so much that they imagine that they're unique. In fact, they're far from unique, as you can see from the fact that this relation is invariant under a similarity transformation. So in other words, if you have a set of gammas, you take your favorite gamma matrices, Weinberg gamma matrices. Then you define you define new gamma matrices <coughs> by a matrix S, such that the uh, determinant of S is not equal to zero. So S has an inverse. You then say gamma prime A is S gamma A S inverse. This gives you an equally good set of gamma matrices. Because now the anti-commutator gamma prime A gamma prime B is the anti-commutator of S gamma A as inverse, S gamma B as inverse, and this turns out to be S gamma A gamma B as inverse, and so this is two A to A B S the identity S inverse, which is just 2 A to A B. So there are infinitely many sets of gamma matrices in any space-time, any number of space-time dimensions. There are an infinite set of gamma matrices related all by a similarity transformation. And any set of matrices that, um, that satisfies this relation, namely gamma A, gamma B, is 2 A to A, B times the identity, where this is uh, an n by n ident uh, identity matrix, and this eta is uh, a d by d a diagonal matrix with, let us say, just plus or minus one on the main diagonal. Uh, this is called a Clifford algebra. And so far, all I've done is defined and said a little bit about the gamma matrices for Clifford algebra. But in fact, um, there are some remarkable things that happen. Um, right away, namely that the generators of the Lorentz group are given by commutators of the gamma matrices. And so this is, this is the magic of the Clifford algebra. Is the operation in the algebra the anti-commutator? Hmm? Is the operation within the algebra within the algebra supposed to be like the anti-commutator? It's supposed to be commutators. Okay, that's or the the Lie mean, algebra. The the, the, no, even the Clifford algebra though. Like in the Lie algebra, it's commutators. Is your algebra right? Operation. But for the Clifford algebra, is it this? 
And if so, can I know how do I do I know that the identity is one of my gamma matrices or? Well, look, I don't know. I, I think I think it's fair to say that a, that a Clifford algebra is a way to achieve the Lie algebra of a Lorentz group. Sure. And remember, a Lorentz group in general, we're ta talking S O N N. In the case of, uh, it's 1, 3, or 3, 1 for the case of a standard Lorentz group. So, these guys obey commutation relations, namely these commutation relations. On the other hand, the gamma matrices obey these anti-commutation relations. So it's a mixture of commutation and anti-commutation. I think in the, the four by four matrices that we tend to use in Q of T, any gamma squared is I. Any gamma squared is I. Think. Sure. So it's gamma one yeah, plus it's four. Well, no, no. Gamma zero squared is minus it. one. Gamma so, one squared is. Yeah, I can't. I don't. There's there is a relationship. If you if you multiply two of the gamma matrices like these, are, are these like these like things that people call the Dirac matrices? Or yeah. If you multiply two of them, do you get a third Dirac matrix? Maybe times some scalars or. I, it's been all right. Since well, we're actually, actually, let me go on a little bit. Yeah, sure, sure. All right. One thing that here's the homework problem. It's on the class web page, so you don't need to worry about any typos on my. Uh, gamma C 
plus I over 2 omega AB times minus I gamma A eta BC plus I gamma B eta AC and um, So let's see what's going to happen here. This B, this gamma BC is going to raise the index B on uh, omega. This uh, gamma AC is going to raise the index A. And if I just skip a couple of lines, the line, the the explicit formulas uh, are in the notes. We get minus, or do you want me to do, do you want me to do every step? Was that a yes? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm happy to do every step. In fact, it's probably instructive to do every step. Okay, so we are at that stage. So this is Uh, the 
generators of Lorentz transformations are rank two tensor, so PL, JAB, the inverse of L is LCA, LDB, uh, uh, JCD. One can, now remember the, the J's are anti, they're, they're rank two anti-symmetric tensors and they're made, they're just commutators of gamma matrices. You can make things that are products of, totally anti-symmetric products of three gamma matrices and uh, Weinberg writes these as A, A, B, C and um, it would be something like this, gamma A, gamma B, gamma C, where these square brackets mean you're supposed to take totally anti put in minus signs to make it totally anti-symmetric. And you can also make a rank four tensor, gamma A, gamma B, gamma C, gamma D. Um, but you can make a rank five tensor in four dimensions because there are only four gamma matrices. So if you wanted to have five of them and the thing was totally anti-symmetric, you'd be out of luck because you just, you just don't have enough of them. Uh, can you explain more about this representation, what you mean by you take Okay, well, it's, all right, let's, well, for example, JAB, what was it, minus I over 4? Yeah. Yeah. Well, to tell you the truth, there is... Uh, oh, so you're saying you, you, you make like a sum of them, but whenever you yeah, yeah, A, B, yeah. and C, you add a minus yeah, sign. Yeah, you okay. add minus signs to make it totally okay. anti-symmetric. And the reason I'm hesitating is I didn't look up the, and Weinberg didn't make it clear, I didn't look up the general definition, whether you put in a 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, 1 over 4 factorial, uh, or yeah, not. Because that's just a convention. Yeah, but yeah. I, and I just don't Let's remember see. how the convention goes. <clears throat> Um, by the way, speaking of four and five dimensions, the ordinary cosmology that you have, um, uh, Robinson, Lemaitre, Walker, whom did I leave out? Friedman. These cosmologies, if you want to embed them you, uh, in a flat space-time, you can do it in five dimensions. And then they are, um, they can just sit there in a five-dimensional space-time. And that's interesting, maybe interesting, well, sort of interesting, but um, notice that the gamma matrices that we've got are the correct gamma matrices for five-dimensional space-times. Whether that is Significant or not, I don't know. Um, so let me let me um, erase a little bit and then go to the <coughs> whiteboard while it's tr tr trying. Which do you find easier to read, the whiteboard or the blackboard? It's the same. Huh? It's kind of the same. They're the same. Okay, 
Now, what we haven't yet done is um, introduce something called beta. This is just a convenient and essentially universal notation. I gamma zero. And what beta does is beta essentially represents parity because it flips the spatial uh, indices and leaves the temporal index unchanged, the temporal gamma matrix unchanged, and consequently on the boosts, it uh, inverts the boosts, which makes sense of its parity, and on the rotations, it has no effect. So that's just a bit of notation. Now, as I said, there are infinitely many choices for Dirac's gamma matrices, in, which are four by four. And Weinberg has made a choice, and his choice is um, gamma zero is minus i zero one one zero, where these ones and zeros are two by two diagonal matrices. I think I'm going to shift, switch to black because I think it's more, or blue, I think it's more visible. Blue photons are higher energy. Um, and notice that this is uh, anti-permission. And we're going to say gamma i is minus i zero sigma i minus sigma i zero, where the sigma i's are the Pauli matrices, and so the gamma i's are going to be Hermitian. And of course, the sigmas are the Pauli matrices. Sigma one is zero, one, one, zero. Sigma two is zero minus i, i zero. And sigma three is one zero zero minus one. And as I said, the gamma matrices of two and three dimensional space are the Pauli matrices. Well, a two dimensional space, you just have one and two. Um, and I'm going to clear, clear that last, maybe something sort of rattling around in your brains that I hope to clear up in just a moment. Uh, with this choice of gamma matrices, beta, which is I gamma zero, turns out to be very simple, zero, one, one, zero, and it is Hermitian then. And now, as I said, in space times of five dimensions, you can use Dirac's four by four gamma matrices, but you need one more, and that one is called, that one should be called gamma four, but traditionally it's called gamma five. And um, I'm gonna write it, since it represents a spatial index in five dimensional space times, I'm gonna write it indifferently as an upper or a lower index. And it turns out that in Weinberg's choice, it's minus i, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And it, you multiply them all together, it turns out that that's 1, 0, 0, minus 1. OK, so that, that one is called gamma 5. And
do is I'll go to the blackboard now rather than flip the, the board, I'll just go to the blackboard and write, um, let me try this chalk. This chalk normally breaks. If you hold it correctly, it breaks. Actually, I always hold it correctly, so it always, in fact, it just broke on the table. No, I just, this chalk, it's imported from Taiwan. Now, a lot of things to import from Taiwan, but it seems to me if we're going to chalk, we should get it from Canada, Mexico, or the U.S., uh, or some other country <coughs> nearby that has lots of chalk. Um, Taiwan, we get semiconductors and other high-tech stuff. All right, let's go to the Lawrence Boosts in... Um, That actually is the only oh, one. So let me go back to the standard chalk. That's G, D, J I zero. So this is minus I over four gamma I gamma zero. And let's use Weinberg's choice of gamma matrices and see what these actually happen to be. Well, minus I over 4 times the commutator of minus I, 0, sigma I, minus sigma I, 0, minus I, 0, 1, 1, 0. And if you multiply those out first one way and then the other, you get I over 4, Sigma I zero zero minus sigma I minus minus sigma I zero zero sigma I and this turns out to be I over two sigma I zero zero minus sigma I. So these are the boost generators in Weinberg's um, the Weinberg's choice of Dirac's four by four gamma matrix. Now, what about the rotation matrices? Well, the rotation matrices are minus I over 4, gamma I, gamma K, um, and so this is minus I over 4, minus I, 0, sigma I, minus sigma I, 0, commutator minus sigma minus i, 0, sigma k, minus sigma k, 0. Right. Um, yeah, I was wondering, on the first one that you worked out, the gamma i, gamma 0, um, should you have an i at the end? If you have one i inside of the commutator and one, side, one i outside of the commutator? All right, all right, I must have, I must have. Uh, Good point, though. So you get a second. Did you ever get your candy from them? Okay, so that's what we have. And now let me just remind you of something you learned in quantum mechanics class. Namely, that the commutator of sigma i with sigma k is 2i epsilon i k j sigma j. And since these i k's and j's are all spatial indices, whether they're up or down doesn't really make any difference. They're spatial indices. These are just the Pauli matrices. These are the commutation relations for the Pauli matrix matrices. In quantum class, they look like this. Sigma i over 2, sigma j over 2 is i epsilon. Well, now I've interchanged i, j, and k. So i, j, k, sigma k over 2. So I've just, if I have it, interchanged the things. And um, what we normally do then is put in an h bar here, an h bar there an h bar here, 
in an H bar there. And so we call this um, S, S I S J is I H bar epsilon I J K S K. So that's the sort of two by two. These are the paddling matrices. Now, if we use that relation here, what we find is, well, first of all, this is equal to I over 4 minus sigma I sigma K 0, 0 minus sigma I sigma K minus minus sigma k sigma i zero zero minus sigma k sigma i and that turns out to be minus i over four sigma i sigma k zero zero sigma minus sigma i sigma k. And so this is minus i, okay, there's a typo in the notes here, minus i over 4, 2i epsilon i k j sigma j, minus 2i epsilon i k j sigma j, And this then has a very nice form, one half epsilon i k j sigma j zero zero minus sigma. Well, I'm using upper indices. I don't know why I'm using upper indices. So now this is um, all of a sudden this becomes so much simpler. The ji zeros are just i over 2, they're block diagonal. The jik, these are the boosts of block diagonal. Rotation generators are also block diagonal. So the direct representation of the Lorentz group is reducible. That is to say, the Lorentz matrices D are some 2 by 2 matrix, 0, 0, another 2 by 2 matrix. They look like that. So while you were gone, I said that the, but Weinberg's choice of gamma matrices makes it apparent and obvious that the uh, that the direct representation of the Warren's group is reducible. And the reason is that the boost generators often look block yeah. diagonal and the rotation generators are block diagonal. Sure. And so the whole an arbitrary 4x4 four four matrix representing an arbitrary Lorentz transformation is going to be a 2x2 two two matrix, zeros, and another 2x2 two two matrix. Um, some useful relations which are follow from what we've done so far and um, maybe I'll switch to a blank. So what you can show at this stage, and maybe 
if you want, they'll do some of this explicitly. But beta gamma A dagger beta is minus gamma A beta the Lorentz, the adjoint of the Lorentz generators beta is the Lorentz generator itself. And so beta D of L dagger beta is D of L inverse. What's happened here, you see, is that this L is an exponential of, let us say, I over 2 omega A, B, J. In other words, here, let me do it this way. So D is, is of this form, and as a result, these guys are just real parameters. And so the inverse of L is e to the minus, well, it's got to be e to the minus i omega AB, JAB. And now what we're saying is that if you pull the betas through, pull the betas through here, uh, you're not going to affect the j's, but the adjoint is going to affect the i and turn it to minus i, and um, the adjoint doesn't affect j a b; it leaves it alone. So when you take the adjoint here, this is left on unchanged because of this relation. These are real. They say you get a minus sign. That's this. And so that gives you that relation. Um, you might say, well, why is this necessarily true? Well, that's because it's beta. And let me get the factors right. Minus i over 4, gamma a, gamma b, and the whole thing adjoint times beta. Okay, so this is beta i over 4. When you, all right, this is um, this. Okay, because of this relation, this is fairly simple. This is, um, if we just do the adjoint thing, then it is gamma B adjoint, gamma A adjoint, beta. And now, beta is on both sides with a gamma just pushing the minus sign. And so this is I over 4 gamma B gamma A. And this is minus I over 4 gamma A gamma B. So you see this stuff does um, work out. Um, it's also sometimes useful to know that gamma phi dagger beta is minus gamma phi, and that beta on gamma phi gamma A dagger beta is minus gamma phi gamma A. So these are relations that you may um, may uh, you may find just superfluous at the moment, but actually in in real calculations these um, sometimes are uh, crucially important. Um, I think maybe I should say a little bit about the um, the Lawrence group here. Um, you see, if you have a um, you see J I K. 
you see there is, um, or let's let's use a, let's say J I J, and this is one half epsilon I J K sigma K zero zero minus sigma K, and um, the boost ones are are um, over there, namely that uh, J, what is it, I zero, is um, I over two sigma I zero zero minus sigma I. Um, so let's notice something. These things are Hermitian because the Pauli matrices are Hermitian. These ones are anti-Hermitian. And that's because they're generating the non-compact part of the group. Um, if we exponentiate these things, then um, what we have, for example, this structure here, D of, let us say, just D of omega, it's E to the one-half omega AB, JAB, so this is going to be e to the one half um, <clears throat> let us say omega i j and then it will be this hey, there should be a i up there. Yeah, I, I left. This will be, um, oh, there's an extra one half, epsilon uh, i j k sigma k zero zero minus sigma k. And then this one, the other one, will be plus a half. Um, or if we segregate the way we have been doing, calling it i zero, then this is omega i zero, let us say, I left out an i. i i zero, this thing, um, i over two, uh, sigma i zero zero minus sigma i. Okay, so that's what it looks like, and so what you can see is that this is of this form. Let me just write it generally. It's e to the z dot sigma Let me write it up here. d of omega is e to the z dot sigma zero zero and the other one is z star dot sigma. So let me just see if if we go from so this is i Well, actually, now I'm not sure that it's Z star. Um, in any event, it's it's what well, we have are two 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 by two representations of the Lorentz group, and one is e to the z dot sigma, where z is a complex three vector, and the other one is e to the z star dot sigma. So these are two inequivalent representation, two by two representations of Lorentz group. One of them is said to be the left-handed representation, the other one the right-handed. And so these things go under the name D one half zero and D zero one half. And um, so with one half zero, it's, it's if you have sigmas here and just zero there, and zero one half, you have zeros here and sigmas there. So you see that although if you look at the top equation under the clock, you see a very complicated 
fearsome looking equation for the Lee algebra, the Lorentz group, but in fact, it's basically very simple. It, the, the basic representation is a two by two complex matrix, e to the z dot sigma. The, um, there's a part of this that's unitary, that's the rotation part, that's e to the i theta dot sigma, and the uh, boost part is e to the do some real three vector dot sigma. That's the boost part. And the same thing over here, you just have, you replace z by e to z star. Actually, it's minus z star. If you want to do it nicely, it's minus z star, because then the part that's for z imaginary, this thing is unitary. And then when you flip to minus z star, you get the same thing. So the two representations are equivalent, are the same for the rotations. They differ for the boosts. And so, and in fact, they differ in the sense that in this case, you have e to the, let's say, r dot sigma, where r is real. And over here, you have e to the minus r dot sigma. So it's the inverse boost, sort of a shrink, or a boost in the opposite direction, in a sense. All right, so we're basically, basically at the end of the hour. Does somebody know how to turn that off? Um, I'm not sure that that works. Oh, he's got, yeah. Stop.